the ancient city of Oxford, famous as a center of learning and a center of the British motor car industry, but less well known as a center of the country where nightingales are found in England. In the wooded country round Oxford, there are more nightingales to be heard than in any part of England. These little singers return to Africa in May and settle in some tract of woodland south of a line drawn from York to Bristol. Each bird has his own territory of about 80 yards square and keeps to that in the nesting season. In appearance, the nightingale is very like the robin, which you see here. But the robin has a brown back and red breast, while the nightingale, though about the same size, is brown except for a chestnut red tail. In the nesting season, the male bird sings both by night and day, usually in dense parts of the wood, but sometimes on a bough in a clearing. The nightingale makes a nest in the darkest part of the wood and usually on the ground among the dead leaves and bracken of last year. The eggs vary in number from four to six and are a dull olive green which tones with their surroundings. A second type of nest is sometimes built at the foot of a small tree. The nightingale is one of the cleverest birds at hiding and camouflaging its nest, which is not easily found. A third type of nest, which is rather rare, is built about two feet above the ground in a bramble bush. Though the nest is usually in a wet position, it is built of overlapping leaves, which make it waterproof. And this nest, which was taken from the bramble bush after the young birds had flown, contained all these leaves besides grass and moss. The mother nightingale sits on her eggs for a fortnight this dull job being enlivened by her mate, who perches above and sings. It is a mistake to think the nightingale sings only at night. From 11 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, he is in full song. But when the eggs have hatched out, he has less time for singing for the family requires care, and the little beaks are always gaping for food. Who would think that next year these beaks will produce songs to make lovers dream and drive poets into ecstasies of poetry? Both parents are kept busy bringing food for the family. Notice that mother first perches above the nest to see that there is no danger near before she flies down to the babies. And then stuffs more food into the ever open mouths of her offsprings. Young nightingales can dispose of any sort of insect, but the favorite food is caterpillars. A baby nightingale can eat caterpillars this size at the rate of one every three minutes, if it can get them. As these caterpillars work havoc in the woods by eating the leaves off trees and bushes, the nightingale, busily collecting food for the family, is performing a valuable task in ridding the woods of injurious caterpillars and is one of the most useful birds we have.
Unfortunately for the photographer, the nightingale prefers the darkest part of the wood for its hunting ground. It is difficult enough to see, let alone photograph, for it seldom ventures into the open, and only the light shining on its wagging tail gives away its presence. All the family are true Oliver Twists, and always ask for more. Mother finds another caterpillar and darts off with it, and fed like this, the family grows apace. The nightingales are beautifully graceful birds and so light-hearted that not even the cares of a family can prevent them from enjoying life. Father on the bough above the nest, with his mouth full of caterpillars, did a little song and dance. The family down below joined in with a chorus of caterpillar, caterpillar. At length, father took pity on them and swept down with a coveted mouthful. Then came mother. Then father again. The young birds were now nearly large enough to leave the nest, and soon, encouraged by their parents on the branches above, they summoned up enough courage to leave home. You can just see them left to the center of the picture, moving among the brambles. For a while, the mother tried to lead them to safety and still feed them. But now, the family had broken up and for the last time this summer, the song of the nightingale rang out from the wood. 